So today I'm here with uh, Brandon over there and Nicole over here and they both brought their brand new toys with them. Uh, Brandon has a MiG 2400 and Nicole has a Propulse 200 and what we're going to do is we're going to weld some uh, thin steel and we're going to use 030 wire, 7525 gas and what we're going to do is we're going to compare like the low end, the material that I have is about 50 or 60 thousand, so just shy of 1 16th of an inch. And we're gonna weld and we're gonna see the difference and we're gonna see what the, what the hype on ST Arc is all about and what the difference is and what, a, what an old school transformer machine will do, which is fairly inexpensive, bulletproof, a lot of power, or a high tech inverter will do. And, and how they weld different and what the difference really is. We're gonna have some arc shots, we're gonna look at this, same wire roll, same gas tank, same MIG gun, just a different uh, machine. So Brandon here is gonna be welding on, they both are gonna be welding on the same piece here. This is this uh, 50 thousandths or 60 thousandths, 16 gauge, 1 16th of an inch. And we're gonna be welding with 030 wire, 7525 gas, Brandon has to dial his machine in here with life readouts and amperage and voltage, which means that he has to strike an arc, actually have somebody else look at it and then dial it in. Uh, the wire feed rate goes one through 10, so there's no inches per minute. He gotta do this a little bit by ear. He can't really dial it in by, um, by a chart. And then the voltage is uh, two steps. So there's 24 heat settings right now. He's on heat setting number nine out of 24. Anyways, um, the machine is dialed in. We did this here on the back side already. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him weld. And as he welds, normally as a guy welds, he has to keep a really close stick out like this, like about 3 eighths of an inch. So and I'm gonna have him pull away from 3 eighths all the way to inch and a half and then go back down and see what the machine does. And as most of you guys know, it's gonna be starting to like, sputtering and stuttering and it's not gonna weld right but I want to see exactly what it looks like and I'm gonna try to get an arc shot of this so looking at this a little bit closer so this is the part here uh, cold rolled steel, 16 gauge, 1.6 millimeters, 60 thousandths, maybe just a hair thinner. So here's what Brandon welded. And the first uh, three quarter inch looks pretty good. As he was going up, you can see it was sputtering and stuttering. And then the last half inch there looks pretty good too, like right about there. And then you see the bead width is inconsistent, even like the bluing of the material right here. The heat affected zone is inconsistent, like everything is kind of inconsistent. I mean, we, we knew it was going to be inconsistent just based on what we did, but this is no weld that you would want on your car when you restore it or anything. So now we'll see what uh, Nicole will do with the Propulse 200 doing the same exact thing. So here on the Propulse 200, all Nicole has to do is get out of the aluminum program, get into the steel program for 030 wire with uh, 7525 gas here, hit select and then in um, the top right corner you see a material thickness estimation there. You want to be at a, just shy of 60 thousandths and um, We'll see how that will weld for her. So what Nicole just welded, same piece of metal, same gas, same uh, wire spool, same MIG gun. You can tell that she did the same thing, like starting out pretty good, going up really high and then for a split second she lost the parameters, but the machine came right back in. You see that the bluing is pretty much consistent, 
the bead width for the most part is consistent, at least way more consistent than that. It lays down nice and flat. So this is the ST arc function. It stands for short transfer arc. The arc is always igniting right above the material. On higher settings where classic transformer machines long arc the short circuit, this machine still stays and ignites right above the material and adjusts the parameters as you pull away from the material. This can be helpful when you get into hard to reach areas like sharp V grooves and you have to run a lot of stick out that you typically can't. With this machine you can run up to inch and a quarter stick out and it will it will just adjust the parameters for you as you're welding and you won't even notice the difference. So today we learned that both machines weld, they weld pretty good. To set this machine up is a little bit more involved than setting a machine up like this. Uh, when you change your heat settings for different materials, you got to start all over here again, setting your wire speed on this knob and then your voltage over there and put the wire speed and the voltage and ratio. Where here on a Synergic machine, one dial, the upper dial, will adjust both voltage and wire speed for you at the same time. And also, the way how it welds, the way how it controls the arc stability for you, it's absolutely unmatched and it helps you to produce better welds no matter if you're a beginner and you're just starting out and you're wanting to make better welds or if you're a pro who welds in some hard to reach areas.